That's what I usually do. Um, I drive up here and um, I usually try to talk about something that I struggle with personally. And um, one of the things that I struggle with personally is forgiveness. Um, forgiving others and allowing myself to be forgiven. So I wanted to share with you guys a, a moment that, uh, that I experienced recently. Um, and it had a lot to do with forgiveness. So um, I went to Georgia a few weeks ago. And uh, I went for this training, and, and part of the training happened at, um, at the Martin Luther King Historical Site in Atlanta, Georgia. And so there's a lot of new faces. A lot of you guys don't know um, this part of my story. My 17-year-old son was killed uh, a little over six years ago. He was murdered in front of my house. Uh, he wasn't a gang member, and it was a racial murder. My son was killed by two black men because he was Mexican. Um, that's my truth. And so, you know, I've done a lot of healing around that uh, event. I I've done a lot of work on myself around that event. But, you know, I'm a human being, and so it's hard for me to forgive completely, especially with something like that. And so for over six years, I, I carried um, a lot of it, and, and, and uh, it went away little by little as I continue to work on myself uh, here at Homeboy Industries and and, and with, with people outside of Homeboy Industries, like I've continued to work on myself, um, trying to do the internal work to find that place of healing and serenity that, that I've always sought. And so, you know, we went to this historical site and, you know, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't even know we were, we were going to do a training there. We did the training uh, and, and I thought it was just this museum with uh, artifacts from the Civil Rights Movement and, and that was there. But uh, we saw a film, and after the film, uh, the park ranger, because it's a, it's a national park, so the park ranger comes out and uh, he says, uh, we don't do tours except for Martin Luther King's home. The rest of the, of, of the facility, you can kind of tour yourself. Across the street is the Baptist, uh, the Ebenezer Baptist Church. So that's the church where Martin Luther King preached at. Um, this is where a lot of the civil rights movement was planned and acted out from. Uh, it was kind of like the headquarters for, for Dr. King and his group. And he said, there's a sanctuary there where you can pray and meditate if you want to. So I made my way over there. And what I pictured when he said a sanctuary is I pictured kind of a quiet room, uh, kind of small. And, and that's not what it was. Uh, when I walked in the church, I found out that the sanctuary is the actual church. And so I was able to walk into the same church where Dr. King uh, preached from and, and, uh, and talked about the changes that he and the community around him wanted to see here in the United States. And, uh, and I got to sit in the pews where the people sat and listened to him. And, and, uh, and I got to touch the pulpit from where he preached from. And it was a very emotional experience for me. And as soon as I walked in that church, uh, I broke down and I started to cry. And those of you that know me, at any kind of intimate level know that I love to cry. Um, when, when the opportunity comes, I, 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 I grab it and, and I let the tears flow and that's what happened to me. Um, I cried until I couldn't cry anymore. And, um, and it was about 10 minutes of crying as I sat at that pew. And what happened is when, when, I, when I was finally exhausted uh, of my tears, I lifted my head up and I noticed that there was this puddle of tears on the, on the wooden pew in front of me. And, uh, and so I wanted to go and make things right. I wanted to go grab a towel from a restroom and clean it up. But um, like I believe in, in, in a higher power. I believe in a God. And so um, my God talks to me all the time. I'm, I'm, I'm very hard-headed and very thick-headed. So he doesn't really give me subliminals. He just talks directly to me. And so I choose to believe that that's what happened to me at that moment. You know, when I lifted my head up and I saw those tears, I heard a voice, and it, and it told me, um, leave those tears, they're gonna soak into that wood, and a piece of you will be here forever. And, um, and, and when I left that church, I felt freer, because I still had that little piece of hatred for black men, um, because two black men killed my son. But when I left that building, when I walked out of that church, um, I didn't feel that anymore. I felt free, you know? Um, and, and, and that's what I had been seeking for a long time, for six years. That feeling of complete forgiveness and be able to move on with my life. Um, 
it, it was given to me at that moment. You know, um, so forgiveness is really important for me. Um, and I'm going to share another quick story on the flip side of forgiveness, about being forgiven. You know, I was able to forgive in that church and let something go and, and, and give myself some freedom. But uh, something happened to me in my office a, a, a couple of months ago. You know, I'm sitting there minding my business, and this gentleman walks into my office, and, uh, and he looks at me, and he seemed kind of familiar, and, uh, and he told me, do you know who I am? And I looked at him, I said, you seem familiar, but I don't know who you are. He goes, you should know who I am. And I said, why is that? And he told me, because you stabbed me in prison. And uh, I didn't quite know what to do at that moment. And he looked at me, and he goes, um, I forgive you, and, and I need your help. And, uh, and I'm in the process of helping that man right now. Actually, you know, my team is in the process of helping him. He's in the solar panel program right now. And this is the third man that I committed an act of violence against in prison. The third man that walks into my office and, and forgives me and asks for my help. So um, for me, that's one of the key things that I struggle with, but it's one of the key things that really shows me that um, transformation is possible. Because I have uh, been able to forgive and be forgiven. Um, and I think the most important person that I've been able to forgive is myself for so many of the things that I've done. So as you go about your day today, um, if at any moment, um, a, a moment of a, a, a feeling of guilt or shame, comes into your heart for something you did, or or you look at somebody and, and you get that, that moment where you get angry because they did something to you, um, just remember that life is short. I only had 17 years with my son. And uh, I'm glad that he forgave me before he went, because he did. Um, so that's my thought of the day. Thank you.